This is, we're already in it. I mean, you see the empty shelves. John, I hope I can call you back in a year, Marjorie, and go, see, I told you so, nothing happened. Yeah, you, I don't think, you know, it's already happening. You know, it's right out there right now. If you, you just, just, you can see it, right? We, but we, but we really don't have shortages yet. Not not massive shortages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not massive shortages. What you're seeing I mean, is you, you, you can get your bread, you can get your steaks, you can get your chickens. They talked about a turkey shortage for Thanksgiving, but everybody got their turkeys. Yeah, and they paid how much more for them? Oh yeah, they were expensive. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's what happens is it just starts to get too expensive where you can't afford it at all. And 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 this plus. The other thing I, I absolutely predict this will happen within the next two or three months is um, uh, the Biden administration is going to act enact uh, wage and price controls, which will absolutely guarantee scarcity. Um, and, and of course, what will flourish from, from underneath that is going to be all kinds of black markets and, and food um, and other you know, necessities. But we're there, George. I mean, look, the supply chain breaking down. The government is, is, is printing money like there's no tomorrow. There's, it's, you know, absolutely abundant. We're going to go into inflation, hyperinflation, and currency collapse. I, I, I believe that. That's happening yeah. already. And, and, and the global crop production is has been decimated. And In fact, there's a lot of reports out there that the USDA has been paying farmers not to, 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 to you know, to destroy their crops. Uh, to, to, they've been paying them to destroy their crops which is something they do off and on all the time anyway, so I don't know how much. But we're, we're there, George. This is, this is happening now. And you can see it. I, in the Grow Network, we have a forum thread called What Shortage Are, are You Seeing? And we're up to like 10 pages of comments of people with just bizarre things like tombstones <laughs> have gone from $3,000 to $16,000. If you can get them. If you can get them, right? You know, so... And then these really weird and bizarre shortages happening and, and canning supplies come and go, you can't get them sometimes. Seeds at a huge premium, um, you know, garden seeds, uh, all kinds of food supplies, you know, um, you, you may go there and they have something that's not the, you know, they don't have the brand you're used to. It's happening, George, it's happening right now. It's a great time to die at them, right? <laughs> Right. Well, that's the, the average Cuban lost 20 pounds, so yeah, we're going to, America, the whole world is going to go on a diet. Yep. Mar so fun. Marjorie Wildcraft with us, her website for link up at coasttocoastland.com. Where do people see your videos? The best place to go, we're, we're having a webinar actually happening this Saturday, where I'll spend uh, a good length of time condensing 20 years of figuring out the fastest, easiest, and quickest ways to take somebody who knows nothing, is older or out of shape, and get them producing food very, very quickly. Uh, and that's at growyourowngrocery.com. You can find up for that. It's a free webinar. Um, I, feel, I always made all my money as a professional investor. Not a lot from the Grow Network. It's more than a passion project for me. So growyourowngrocery.com. And, and we'll get you started. We'll, we'll show you how to grow food. We'll show you options for if you're in an apartment. We'll show you options if you've got a yard. Um, and, you know, again, I'm assuming you know nothing. You're out of shape. You're older. We, I've specifically developed all these systems for this scenario. Uh, and I've been doing this for, gosh, 15, 18 years now, figuring out what are the, the fastest and easiest ways to get people up to speed. And I'm really grateful. I, I thought the collapse was going to happen back in uh, 2010, 2000. You know, that was... So, yeah. what, so, what, so what if you're off by another 10 years? What if it happens in 2030? I, I just don't see it, George. I just don't see it. Not, you know, not only do we have the food chain reaction scenario, that if these predictions are highly uh, accurate from these large global entities, but we, you're already seeing food inflation. We know there's hyperinflation coming. The supply chain is broken. Uh, global food production is down. Even the UN is warning of a global famine of biblical proportions. You, you know, I, this is not a <laughs> this is not rocket science here. In a couple minutes before we have the break, and we're going to take calls with you next hour, Marjorie. Tell me about snake bite. What happened? <laughs> Oh, I was out in the garden and I got bit by a copperhead snake. Oh. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's potentially a fatal bite, and, but we do enough with home medicine and, you know, I'm strong enough and healthy enough from eating my own home food for so long 
Um, we think they did at home, and it's a little story about how we did it. It teaches people about herbal medicine. Did you cut yourself and you know, suck the blood out or anything? Ah, uh, no, nothing that, no, nothing that crazy. I wish we did something like that. We use a technique called pulsifying, and um, because of where we live, we have quickly care available, and we use that as a pulsifying material. And they're just in a couple of days of pulsing and then doing some internal things with like that and so it's all like to, to prevent infection. Uh, it, you know, I was up mm -hmm. and walking around in a couple of days, um, and um, you know, it's really just a testament to the power of herbal medicine. It also really empowers people that growing their own food, getting really healthy by, by what you produce. And then a lot of the herbs in your yard are really powerful medicines. Um, I don't expect people to go out and see the snake bite as their first thing. But um, it's just a great story to highlight what you can do and what you can achieve. You don't talk too much about growing your own vegetables. How come? You don't oh, I do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Vegetables are a big component of it. But when you get down to a, like, you got to eat scenario, um, and it was a little bit sad for, like, I was a vegan when I started this, but animal products, yeah, by and large, are the most efficient way to produce um, healthy, nutritious calories. Right. And especially protein and fat, which is harder to do. But I'm a huge fan of the garden, because you definitely need all those colors and all those flavonoids and all the, uh, you know, the fiber, as well as the, um, 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 diversity. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of different sources um, of food that you're going to be, you know, gathering wow. food from. So I should have kept my 114-acre horse farm. That's what you're saying, right? Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, George. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, it was in the <laughs> Illinois. Loved it, but... Uh, just so you know, I had, had a lot of racehorses that I bred, and they cost a lot of money, and uh, so I decided I was going to auction off all the horses, and I got some good money out of that, and then uh, some old farmer came by and made me an offer for the entire place, and I wow. said, God, that's twice what I paid for it, so I took it, but it would be worth ten times that today, had I held on to it. All those years of those horses fertilizing the fields, I bet the farmer was looking at that. A lot of vegetables on 114 acres you could you could raise, huh? Oh my gosh, yeah, a lot. That'd be, that'd be too much. All right, stay with oh, us, Marge. We're going to come back and take calls with you next on Coast to Coast AM. Get daily show updates right to your inbox for free with the Coast Zone newsletter. Sign up today at coasttocoastam.com. <laughs> Scratching off with her coffee and her donut every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Weeknights at 6 on KFI. Ready to trade in your old car? Then download the Roto app. That's R O V O. Roto will buy your car and give you the cash you need to buy your next car today. You don't even need to leave your house. It's all done online. Roto will even deliver your new car and take your old car away free of charge. So what are you waiting for? Download the Roto app now or check out Roto.com. That's R-O-T-O, the fastest and easiest way to sell your car. IQ Air wants to give you the cleanest air possible, and the affordable Autumn Series does just that. The Autumn Desk is a revolutionary air purifier that transforms your workspace into personal clean air zones. Unlike other air filtration systems that may take hours to purify the air, the Autumn Desk begins working immediately. Put it right next to you while you work and create your own personal bubble of ultra-pure air. This game-changing technology has been proven to remove 99% of all airborne pollutants. Visit IQAir.com slash US to learn more. Give them a call, 800-500-4AIR, 800-500-4AIR. 500-4247. Amco presents That You Didn't Know. That You Didn't Know that your car's transmission is made up of 800 pieces. Also, that you didn't know that Amco fixed over 40 million transmissions and that Amco offers a nationwide warranty. Are you still driving around with that check engine light on? Amco will read and report the trouble cage on your vehicle for free. Call them today. That's Amco, double A, MCO. By now, you've heard the news. 
Boosters for Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson vaccines are available. They help keep your immunity strong and help keep you and others protected against COVID-19 and its variants. Visit myturn.ca.gov to find out if you're eligible and to find a booster near you. Let's keep each other safer and healthier this winter. Get your booster and don't forget to get your flu shot too. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. The 11th annual KFI Pastathon is here. Drop off your donation at the Anaheim White House now through December 4th. More locations at pastathon.com. All donations go to Katarina's Club, feeding children in Southern California. Good morning, and welcome to a special live edition of Wake Up Call with Jennifer Jones Lee. Tune in right now on Instagram at JJLKFI. While you're watching, just remember you can donate at any time. Just visit pastathon.com and 100% of your donation goes to Katarina's Club. Here's your hostess with the mostest, Jennifer Jones Lee. Thank you so much for that intro, Tyler. Thank you for putting it all together. It is 5 o'clock on December 1st, and this is a special edition of your wake-up call. What we are doing this morning is we are raising money and pasta and sauce for Katarina's Club. And what's fun this morning is, if you want to be a part of the show, you can join me. I'm on Instagram Live right now, JJLKFI. You can see all behind the scenes. Nick Taliochini is already on. He'll be doing traffic all morning for us. So you can see Nick and his awesome onesie this morning. We've got special guests all throughout the morning. We're going to take you to the Rose Parade. We're going to take you to the East Coast with a man who used to be on Wake Up Call and probably the interview I look forward to most every week when I started the show. He is back for a one-time appearance just because he wanted to help the kids of Katarina's Club. He knows all the good that Chef Bruno does, feeding 25,000 kids a week with Katarina's Club. He is here for that. And Eric Lasardo. The man who has created a number of parodies for me, for Jane Wells, for anybody that you can think of. He is going to be on with us at 5.50 this morning. So I told you it's going to be a morning of fun, a morning of news, and most of all, a money, uh, morning to raise money for Katarina's Club and Chef Bruno. Go to Pastathon.com right now to donate. And as of right now, you know, Conway was out at the Anaheim White House last night, and he was able to help everybody come out, have some fun, raise money, raise, you know, get pasta, get sauce. You ready for this? I have the tally. Oh, if you're on Instagram Live right now, you can see my notes. As of 5 a.m., we can tell you, as of 10 o'clock last night, we were at $318,000, $318,750, and that includes 37,351 pounds of pasta and Soft. Look at you guys. We're four hours into this, and that's where we're at already. I have no doubt that we are going to raise a ton of money for Katarina's Club, so we'll be doing that all morning. If you're not already doing it, join me right now. JJLKFI, we are broadcasting live on Instagram. Well, LA County Sheriff Villanueva says he doesn't trust the company hired by the county to track COVID-19. Speaking of COVID, it's going to keep LeBron James off the court for the Lakers for a while. And the L.A. City Council members have unanimously voted to ban ghost guns in the city. 505 will talk with infectious disease doctor Simone Wild. A lot of people are guessing or wondering what is the efficacy of the current COVID-19 vaccine against the new Omicron variant? We'll find out when we talk with her in just a few minutes. But let's start with some of these stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. L.A. County Sheriff Villanueva says he doesn't trust the company hired by the county to track COVID-19 test results. Villanueva says a security briefing with the FBI prompted his decision. The sheriff met with agents last week to review a potential security risk with Fulgent. The sheriff says agents told him Fulgent has ties to the Chinese government and could potentially share personal data. Supervisor Sheila Kuehl was also invited to attend but couldn't. Kuehl says she was told there was no solid evidence to suggest an issue, but the sheriff says it's enough for him to drop Fulgent and look for a different company. Fulgent released a statement that while they do have an affiliate in China, they have an American board of directors. Steve Gregor, KFI News. Now people in L.A. have criticized Police Chief Michael Moore over his enforcement of the COVID-19 vaccine mandate for city workers. A group of protesters gathered and waved signs in downtown L.A. Los Angeles leftist for choice and unity's Ian Jameson was at the protest yesterday. He says he thinks there are more people on the left that oppose vaccine mandates 
than the media portray. And uh, they're, they're afraid to speak out because they're going to be labeled white supremacists, they're going to be labeled uh, Trumpsters. He says he thinks the mandate is unconstitutional. Under the city's mandate, city employees risk losing their jobs if they are not fully vaccinated by December 18th. Blake Trolley, KFI News. And COVID's going to keep LeBron off the court for the Lakers for a while. The NBA's COVID-19 safety protocols means he's expected to miss several upcoming games. James has been vaccinated. NBA rules, though, say vaccinated players start COVID, uh, COVID protocols after a positive or inconclusive test result. The player then has 10 days of isolation without any physical activity. And an FDA health panel has endorsed Merck's COVID-19 pill. The FDA asked its outside experts to consider the pill. They voted in favor of the antiviral pill, saying its benefits outweigh the risks. Merck scientists say they believe their drug will be effective against the new Omicron variant. So we'll talk about the efficacy of these different COVID-19 vaccines in just a second when we join are joined by infectious disease doctor Simone Wilde. But right now, the man who is in a onesie this morning, <laughs> who is the most adorable traffic person we have ever had on this show. Nick Taliokini, good morning to you. Good morning, Jen. And if you are not joining us on Instagram Live, it's JJLKFI. Instagram Live, she is looking incredible in her own sweatshirt today this morning. <laughs> looking stunning with that bow. Yeah, that's right, Mama. Oh, yeah, I got if a bow tie on. You've got a bow tie on. I you're curled my hair. So good. It's a big uh, day, you, guys. Yeah, I was going to say. No, she looks amazing. So definitely tune in. <laughs> Checking the drive right now as you're making your way on the southbound side of the 405. Get into the Seal Beach area. That will be rough for your ride right now. From about Seal Beach Boulevard, you make way through the split with the 22. That's the town trans crews wrapping up shop in the area. Heading through this area of town or anything else. Town 250 on your cell phone, keyword KFI traffic, westbound side of the 91. Riverside through Corona, that will be heavy stretches of flowing for you overall. From before Lost here, you'll see those delays continuing as you make way towards the 241 toll road. And Marina Valley, 215 north, it's still going for you right now from before Eucalyptus as you make your way uh, past the merge with the 60 toward UCR and the Riverside Interchange. KFI in the sky helps get to there faster. I'm Nick Paul your team. 506 on your wake-up call, KFI AM 640 live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. First of all, uh, Dr. Simone Wilds is an infectious disease doctor at South Shore Health in Weymouth, Massachusetts. Dr. Wilds, good morning. And you don't know that I am doing this right now, but I have the most beautiful picture of you in your uh, doctor's coat uh, from South Shore Health. And we are on Instagram Live this morning raising money for Katerina's Club, which feeds 25,000 kids a week here in Southern California. And we've got a picture up here for everybody who's on Instagram Live so they can see how beautiful you are as we talk to you this morning. Well, thank you so much, Jen, and I'm happy to hear you're doing such a great charity work. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, it is our pleasure, let me tell you. So let's start with everybody's big question. I got vaccinated. I may even have a booster. Is this going to be, a, uh, uh, it, what is the efficacy of these COVID-19 vaccines against this new Omicron variant of COVID-19? Jen, I wish I could say, you know, I have the perfect answer, but right now I will say you have some protection. Um, we'll have to wait to see what the rest of the data shows, but you will have protection against Omicron. The exact numbers, we don't know yet, but as soon as that is it's available, we will be sharing it. Okay, so let me ask you this. People come into your office and they say to you, uh, oh my gosh, should I run out and get a booster? I'm nervous about this Omicron variant. What's your answer to them? I would say absolutely run and go get your booster. And the reason I tell people to run and get their booster is, you know, what a booster does, it increases the, your antibody levels. So if your antibody levels have waned, you want to make sure you have as much um, antibodies as we enter into the phase with the Omicron variant. And so really important that if you are fully vaccinated, you go get your booster. But of course, I cannot leave out my friends who have not yet gotten their first dose of their vaccine, that they too are also very um, concerning for me. So if they come in my office and they haven't yet gotten their vaccine, I want to really encourage them to go ahead and get their at least their first shot right now. Okay, let me play devil's advocate then from those patients, particularly side, who come in and say to you, why would I go get that first shot? We don't even know that it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to have, it's going to be um, effective against this new variant. Why would I go get it? I mean, shot after or variant after variant are going to come out. So what good is it? 
Well, what I will say to that group is that right now we're still dealing with the Delta. Um, we know the vaccines have been working quite well against the Delta. So at least you need to get protected against the Delta. So definitely go out and get the vaccine because you need to be, be protected against the Delta in case you happen to get the Delta. Heaven forbid you get any of them. But, you know, you have some protection. And that's what we're trying to make sure we tell people that. We don't know how well the vaccines are going to work, but we do know that at least you will have some protection against COVID. What this reminds me of is when you go to get a flu shot and they tell you this flu shot should be effective against these, I don't know, 12 strains of the flu. There are other strains out there that this won't be necessarily fully effective against, but getting this one's probably better than nothing. Yes, for sure. And that is the key message in. Um, go get some protection because partial protection is way better than zero protection. Dr. Wilde, thank you as always. I'm glad people got a chance to see your beautiful face this morning and hear you as well. I appreciate your time as always. All right, thank you and be safe. Thank you, we definitely will. Yeah. That is Dr. Simone Wilde. She is an infectious disease doctor at South Shore Health in Weymouth, Massachusetts. Again, if you're not watching on Instagram this morning, you are missing out because we have heads on sticks. We have Nick Saliokini in a onesie. And we have all kinds of special guests coming up, including taking you to the Rose Parade. And uh, I, it, it's just going to be a fun morning. Let's get back to some of these stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. LA City Council members have unanimously voted to ban ghost guns in the city. Council member Paul Corrette says the guns are keeping law enforcement busy. Now, we also had uh, ghost guns, or homemade guns that don't have serial numbers. Officials say the guns are popular with people who are banned from owning guns, including convicted felons and people who are mentally ill. Officials in Michigan say a 15-year-old high school student who shot and killed three of his classmates used a gun that his dad bought less than a week ago. This was a recent weapon purchase that he had been shooting with it and had posted pictures of a target and the weapon. That's all part of what's being looked at. Oakland County Sheriff Michael Bouchard says there were more than seven students and a teacher who were hurt in the attack yesterday. Some of the injuries are very serious. He says the teen shooter still had several bullets in his gun when he was arrested. A report in the Wall Street Journal says reloaded ammunition may have been put in the gun that Alec Baldwin fired on the set of his movie, Rust. The film's weapons supplier told investigators reloaded ammunition may have ended up on the set along with dummy rounds and blanks that he provided. Cinematographer Helena Hutchins was killed in October when Baldwin fired the gun that was supposed to have blanks in it. A man's apparently got away from cops after reports of a break-in at a jewelry store in Hollywood. Sheriff's deputies responded to a call about a break-in last night. They set up a perimeter around the store and shut down Santa Monica Boulevard for a while. But when they went in, there was no one there. It's not clear if anything was stolen. The Supreme Court is considering a case on a Mississippi law that bans nearly all abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. ABC's M. M. Wynn says thousands of protesters are expected to gather outside the court in Washington. The case, Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization, where the outcome could redefine reproductive rights across the country and impact other sectors from health care and the economy to criminal justice. A poll by Washington Post has found three in four people say the choice to have an abortion should be left to a woman and her doctor. Well, for the first time in nearly 30 years, I feel like this is from the Duff file. You already know this if you live in Southern California. Downtown LA didn't get any rain in November. None. Zero. Nada. The National Weather Service says the city usually gets about three quarters of an inch in November, so to get none is out of the ordinary. The last time this happened was 1992. U.S. Labor Secretary Marty Walsh has toured the Port of L.A. while taking and talking supply chain disruptions with local officials. We went on to a, one of the ports on the backside, and I saw crane operators taking the goods off the ship. I saw truck drivers driving the, the goods out of the yard, uh, and I've seen a lot of work happening here. The port's executive director says there's been significant improvement in cleaning the import containers from the docks in recent weeks. UC and Cal State have extended their admissions deadline for fall applications because of computer problems. UC deadline is now tonight, and the same deadline's been set up for Cal State Fullerton, Long Beach, and San Luis Obispo. Cal State Fresno, LA, Pomona, San Diego, and San Jose have extended their deadlines to December 15th. 
And deputies in Ventura County will now use an app to help manage evacuation orders during emergencies. The app was co-designed by the Sheriff's Department and will give deputies in the field the ability to transmit information back to the command post about the status of homeowners. They can very quickly in their account for, you know, say knock on the door of the house and somebody says, I'm not leaving, they can make a note of that. And then that gives us that real-time information as well if people are staying behind and in what areas. The show says the information would be used to make decisions about where and when to deploy resources and to prevent the overlapping of those resources. Again, we are live on Instagram right now. You're going to get to see the whole show, including some special guests we've got later in the hour. We're going to talk Rose Parade. We're going to talk, of course, the market. There's my first hint if you are a big special guest is at 535. And then we've got a musical guest coming on. At 5.50 this morning. It is just a morning of fun, and this is all to raise money for Katarina's Club. We are raising money and pasta and sauce. Now, don't forget, you can do this a couple of ways. First, you can just go to pastathon.com. That's probably the easiest. I've seen people from Abilene, Texas, and Puerto Rico who have logged on this morning to watch. And then also, what you can do is if you go to Smart and Final, if you're in California, Arizona, or Nevada, at checkout, all you have to do is just give an extra 10 bucks. 10 bucks feeds 14 kids, courtesy of Burla Pasta. And again, if you missed our announcement at the start of the show, last night, Conway broadcast from 6 to 10 at the Anaheim White House with Chef Bruno there and was able to raise $318,750 and 37,000 pounds of pasta and sauce. So if you want to be a part of this this morning, and I hope you do, go to pastathon.com. That's where you can donate. All right, when we come back, if you're like me, one of the things you look forward to on New Year's Day every year is the Tournament of Roses Parade. Last year, let's be honest, it sucked because we didn't get to see the Rose Parade. And we love the Rose Parade. Well, the construction of the floats for this year is well underway. We're about a month away now from the big reveal. So we're going to talk about the theme of this year's parade and about some of the floats that are being constructed right now, this morning, with Brant Dunlap, president of the South Pasadena Tournament of Roses Committee. He's going to join us in just a few minutes. JJLKFI on Instagram is where you can go to see Nick Pagliocchini tell us about what's going on on the 15. As you're making your way through the Cone Pass on the northbound side, uh, right around Oak Hill, it's a wreck that has a two a left lane shut down. A fatality crash investigation underway for your drive, and that's why you are seeing a messy one. First thing this morning, as you make your way along the 15 and northbound, going to be still going for you, leaving the 138. Also, southbound side of the 15 this morning, packing for your drive, getting out of hysteria from as far back as Main Street, and those delays do continue toward Claycorn. Westbound side of the 91 Riverside to Corona. Definitely going to be a mess for your drive from before Las Sierra as you make way past the 241 toll road. And checking out your drive in the Steel Beach area once again. Couch and scooter wrapping up shop for your drive. South on side of the 405 from before Steel Beach Boulevard as you make way toward the split with the 22. Definitely seeing a rough go for your drive there. KFI in the Sky helps get you there faster. I'm Nick Polly Okini. This report is sponsored by Whole Foods Market. At Whole Foods Market, bake your best with 20% off 365 brand flowers, sweeteners, alternative sweeteners, and baking chips through December 14th while supplies last. Plus, prime members save an extra 10%. See more on the Whole Foods Market app. Hi, this is Dan Patrick, and here's what's trending from the iHeart Sports Network, presented by Mercedes-Benz. The Lakers were able to overcome adversity, beating the Kings in Sacramento. LeBron James entered COVID-19 health and safety protocols before the game. The Suns beat the Warriors in a battle of the top two teams in the NBA. Phoenix is now tied with Golden State for the best record in the league after winning 17 straight. And five-star quarterback Malachi Nelson followed Lincoln Riley committing to USC. I'm Missy Jordan. Groundbreaking runs in the family. Safety runs in the family. Extraordinary runs in the family. The 2021 Mercedes-Benz range of SUVs. Every member is waiting to impress. You can learn more at MBUSA.com. Every year, our team provides food and toys for less fortunate families. Hello, my name is John O'Quinn, owner of Ruder Hill Plumbing. I remember one Christmas when my dad didn't have any work, and we didn't have any money. I can still recall the look of shame on his face when my brother and I only had one present to open. I was a brat and said something I shouldn't have. To this day, I am still sorry for what I said to my dad. I was selfish and I wish I could take it all back. So I know what it's like for some families. At Ruder Hero Plumbing, we want to make Christmas special. So all this month, 
We are donating a portion of every plumbing and drain cleaning service we do to families in need. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays from our family to yours. Thank you. CL1028886. Gary, you love your SolarMax technology panel so much you gave them names. Well, I don't like to brag, but you did get the honor of sharing a name with one of my solar panels. Oh. You lucky. Listen, since I switched to SolarMax technology, I can keep the lights on as much as I want. When all the appliances, when all the computers, and all the charts, because we're... My electricity is practically free. SolarMax is local right here in Southern California. They have the best products and the best service going. Right. SolarMax does everything themselves here in Southern California. Exceptional quality control is the result. And there's no middleman. You're going to save with even no upfront cost also. They have the newest and most innovative Tesla products like the Tesla 420 solar panels and the Tesla Powerwall. Right now, pay zero down for that Tesla package and $79.96 per month with a 1.99% APR. Style pound 250 from yourself.